hello students hope all you are fine hope all you are staying at home so today we will discuss the performance matrix for digital communication that is very important topics for your exam and always is an important topic for digital communication systems so the most commonly used matrix for digital communications are basically three number one is fidelity number one is complexity and number number three is bandwidth efficiency so number one was fidelity number two was complexity and number third was bandwidth efficiency in the slide you can see the fidelity i have written this metric typically measures how often data transmission errors are made given the amount of transmitted power complexity this metric almost always translates directly into cost means it is nothing but the cost factor and the bandwidth efficiency the metric measures how much bandwidth a modulation uses to implement the communication so basically what happens in fidelity so fidelity in digital communication is reflected in how often transmission errors occur so basically error is a free term error will always come in digital communication we saw in analog communication there were so many errors so in digital communications also we will come across different kinds of errors so fidelity in digital communication is reflected in how often transmission errors occur as a function of the signal to noise ratio transmission errors can be either bit errors means one bit in error or frame errors frame errors may be any error in message or packet so the application often determines the appropriate error metric with a data transmission at a fixed transmission power or at a fixed transmitted power the reliability of any data communication can be increased by lowering the speed of the data communication a lower speed uh, a lower speed transmission normally implies the signal bandwidth will be smaller so that the receiver bandwidth will be smaller and consequently the snr will be made higher so if bandwidth is less snr will be high so that is one means fundamental theory so data communication engineers strive for a snr measure that is not an explicit function of the transmission bandwidth the accepted measure in engineering practice is the ratio of the average received energy per bit over the noise spectral density that is eb by n0 fine now deep into the matter complexity the second point so complexity i i told you that complexity is nothing but a cost function so it behaves like a cost function so always we take this as a cost function so that can be used as a quantity that requires engineering judgment to estimate often the cost of a certain level of complexity changes over time a good example of this trade off changing over a short period of time was seen in the land mobile telephony market in the uh, in the 1990s when early in the decade many people resisted a move to a standard based on code division multiple access technologies based on the cost and complexity of the handheld phones by the end of the decade the proposed telecommunication standards had become much more complex but the advances in circuit technology allowed low cost implementations 
so that is the complexity fine and the third point was bandwidth efficiency so basically bandwidth efficiency in communication system is typically a measurement or measure of how good the system is using the bandwidth resource or you can say how well the system uh, with the bandwidth resource so the bit rate of communication if denoted by wb bits per second and the transmission bandwidth is denoted by bt so bandwidth cost money to acquire and the owners of this bandwidth want to communicate at at as higher a data rate as possible examples are licenses to broadcast radio signals or the installation of copper wires to connect the two points and bandwidth efficiency is very important for people who try to make money selling communication resources for instance if one communication system has a bandwidth efficiency that is twice the bandwidth efficiency of a second system then the first system can support twice the users on the same bandwidth twice the number of users implies twice the revenue the measure of bandwidth efficiency for digital communications that will be used is usually denoted by spectral efficiency and is defined as the eta b means bandwidth efficiency is wb by the wb by bt and the unit of this bandwidth is always bits per second per hertz fine so uh if of all uh, we have uh, some other important characteristics also many times in communication applications other issues be besides bandwidth efficiency complexity fidelity and performance are important for example for a uh, handheld mobile device the size weight shape and the battery uses all are important for the user so always there are some important characteristics besides this fidelity complexity and bandwidth efficiency but these are the fundamental characteristics fine digital communications is a relatively unique field in engineering in that there is a theory that gives some performance limits for data transmission the body of work that provides us with these fundamental limits is information theory so i discussed mutual information channel theory and all these uh, before the lockdown in the class so the founder of information theory was actually shannon a c shannon and shannon had built his theory on other seminal work that included while the, this lecture cannot derive all the important results from information theory it will attempt to highlight the important results in information theory that relate to the material in this text the physical layer transmission of digital information so i'll restrict myself to explain the part physical layer transmission of digital information in this lecture an important contribution of the shannon was to identify that every channel had an associated capacity capital c and reliable in fact error free errorless transmission is possible on the channel when wb is always less than c a channel of significant interest for a majority of this lecture is the channel which experiences an additive white gaussian noise a w g n a is for additive w is for white g is for gaussian n is for noise 
so the channel which experiences an additive white gaussian noise distortion for this additive white gaussian noise channel when the signal uses a transmission bandwidth b sub x t channel identified the capacity of the channel should be c is equal to bt log base to 1 plus s nr signal to noise ratio this immediately leads to a constraint on the spectral efficiency that can be uh, reliably achieved that is eta b always less than log 1 plus signal to noise ratio the equation the above equation that is eta b less than log 1 plus snr unfortunately states that to achieve a linear increase in spectral efficiency a communication engineer must provide exponentially greater received s n r hence in most communication system applications the spectral efficiencies achieved are usually less than 15 bits per second per hertz often much less if we assume an ideal bandpass filter of bandwidth bt then the power noise or noise power and the corresponding value of SNR will be Pn is equal to N0 Bt this is the noise power and SNR will be Ps by N0 Bt so recall that most communication system engineers like to quantify performance with Eb by N0 and that Ps should be always equal to Eb into Wb so that if you put this value on the above equation the equations of the spectral efficiency become nb less than log 1 plus eb wb by n0 bt and is equal to log 1 plus eb by n0 into efficiency fine the achievable spectral efficiency versus eb by n0 is represented in the next slide you will find one figure so that that is the achievable spectral efficiency versus eb by n0 so in that figure you'll find the line represent the solutions to the equation which equation nb is equal to log 1 plus eb by n0 into eta b for a given e0 by n0 information theory indicates that reliable communication at spectral efficiencies below the line in the figure are achievable while spectral efficiencies above the line are not achievable fine means if it is achievable then reliable communication at spectral efficiencies will be below this line and if it is above the line then the uh, tendency or reliably reliable communication and spectral efficiencies will be not achievable fine clear the figure uh, shows us the maximum achievable spectral efficiency the results in this figure provide some interesting insights for how communication system should be designed in situations where bandwidth is the most restricted resource the goal then is to drive the received eb by n0 to as a large value of uh, large value as possible for example many telecommunication systems have designed operating points where eb by n0 is always greater than 10 decibel in situations where EB is the most restricted resource, it is possible to still achieve reliable communication by reducing the spectral efficiency. For example, communications with deep space probes is limited by amount of power that can be received. You know, 
communication systems for deep space communication are designed most often to have a relatively low bit rates and by setting transmission efficiency less than one also you can see from this figure that there is a limit on how small eb by n0 can be made and still maintain reliable communications this minimum is eb by n0 is equal to ln2 is equal to minus 1.59 decibel this results from information theory provide benchmarks by which we can calibrate performance as we progress in our understanding of digital communication theory here i am giving you one homework problem that you have to show the minimum value of eb by n0 is always ln2 so that the minimum eb by n0 needed to support reliable communication is always ln2 that is one simple homework problem easily you can understand if you uh, just go through this video obviously i hope you will understand and you will able to solve this so stay home stay safe and to do anything first you need to put your heart in it you love to play listen music and many more things the reason behind this is that either you love to do it or you find it easy to do according to human nature we all want to do those things which you love or which are easy to do so to focus on studies you need to do these things please listen carefully you have to tell your brain that it is important for you you need to make it easier for you make small targets like in the beginning try to complete only a topic in interval of time and after some times increase it according to your capacity because i hope you know your capacity number third if you want to spend some time in other activities then first do it because if you want to watch tv and you are forcing yourself to study then it just end up in nothing neither you are able to study nor you are able to do that thing which you want study with free mind so you can concentrate on it if you think that reading your subject books is becoming hard for you then first read some novels of your interest obviously if you like to read the novel <laughs> so reading the novel will help develop your interest in reading and after that you can go through uh, your subject books but the most important thing is that you need a reason for studying the reason can be your mother can be your father can be girlfriend or boyfriend anyone or anything can be your reason your purpose so try to find it out first and make believe in yourself that i can do it this is also very important thank you